In this video, I make some traditional raised panel doors. The project starts at the router table. I have a Triton router mounted in a Craig plate, all housed in a bespoke unit I built a few years ago. I bought the cutter set from eBay in 2020, and I used it last year to make some wall panelling that these doors will abut to. I made the wall panel at Workshop 2 using my Eboa router. It turned out that the Eboa router wasn't really suitable for table mounting and it caused me all sorts of problems. I hope this time it will be much easier. I will place a link to that video in the description. The reason I am mounting the cutter is to run some scrap through the table to establish the depth of the groove the bit cuts. This dimension is important as it dictates the length of the rails and the width of the panel. Once the cutter is securely fastened into the router, I square the fence up to the bearing at the top of the router and then set the height of the cutter to round about where I think it should be. Now I can make my test cut. And the depth turned out to be 10mm. Now I have the depth, I can start to prepare my components. I bought them as planed inch by three timbers, but they needed regularising as these had been cut from wider boards at the merchants, possibly six inch. I made sure the pieces were longer than the finished length so I could cut away any snipe later. Now I knew the width of my styles, I could mark out the rail lengths allowing for the 10mm ten and that would sit inside the groove. Then return to my crosscut station and cut the rails to length. This is how I'm currently suspending my dust extraction hose. This end of the workshop is currently under redevelopment and I will bring you some more videos of this soon. With all my stock now cut to length I could pair up the styles and rails. This provides the opportunity to ensure that any imperfections were not on the visible faces or edges. For a February day I was really surprised to be visited in the workshop by a wasp. Ok, with my face and edges now known, I can lock off the router, add a feather board for safety and route to the groove and moulding into the edge of every component. It's time to swap the cutter for the coping one. This will route the moulding to the rear lens and provide the tenon. It's just a case of setting the exact height to ensure an exact match. Ensuring that the bearing in the middle of the cutter is exactly flush with the face of the fence. I have this non-elaborate coping push stick. It's not woodpecker, but it works perfectly well. It took a couple of attempts to make sure that the cutting height was exactly dialed in on a piece of scrap and once it was, I made the cuts. All the routering is now complete to the frames. I can now check that the dimensions are correct before establishing the panel sizes. The panels were milled from 4 inch wide timber. To try and get the stock as straight as possible, I clamped my festal rail to the saw fence. This is akin to a join and producing a straight edge. I could then cut the boards slightly over the 80mm size that I needed. and then ensuring I was still referencing my square edge passing through my Triton thicknesser. These pieces are longer than needed so I could later cut out any snipe. I found a lazy way to mark the edge of the board that had already been planed.
Now I can sort the pieces into panels. Note I am alternating the grade rings. I find this method, along with minimising the width of each piece, helps to keep the panels as flat as possible. In order to get the panel joints really tight, I fitted any open joints using a smoothing plane. I no longer have a jack plane and my bench bull. And now I had my panels established, I needed to mark out the position of the biscuits, allowing for the snipe that was eventually to be removed. I really like this budget biscuit jointer that my parents bought me a few years ago. I've done loads of work with it. Each piece of stock received three biscuits. The three panels were glued up using the glue bars I made in my last video. Here I am gluing vertically with the bars held in the folded down MFT bench. Now here is a tool I've not used for a long while, maybe 30 years, my double handled scraper. Softwood doesn't scrape very well, but here I'm using it to remove the excess glue squeeze out. Time to cut the panels to their final size. First in length with the Festool crosscut station, and then to width on the Dewalt table saw. I'm removing similar amounts from each side and ends. And now back to the router table to mount the panel cutter. This thing is 3 inch in diameter, so it should spin at around 11,000 RPM. So I've turned my router settings down to number 2, according to the Triton instruction book. As the cutter is so large, I need to make a quick sacrificial fence, as it will not fit into my normal one. This is a couple of 1 inch spacers and a piece of inch by 3 that I cut a rough hole in to the profile of the bit. Now I'm not going to bore you with, with all the panel routing as it took quite a while as I removed a millimetre or so at a time. That was about 12 passes total. But the process was to cut across the ends, the end grain and then down the grain. Wind the router at one millimetre and repeat. I had to empty the dust bucket midway. It does create quite a lot of waste. The last few passes I made a partial cut with the grain before completing the cross grain cut. As the panels were getting thin at the edges I didn't want to risk any breakout. And eventually after all these passes the panel then fit the groove in the styles and rails. And just before glue up everyone's favourite task lots and lots of sanding. For the glue up process I used my vertical MFT table and my newly created glue bars. And to make sure my door didn't stick to the bench, a piece of brown paper. I'm using Gorilla PVA glue here which has a clamp time of around 20 minutes. And I clamped the door to the bar and then used a couple of wedges in the end just to make sure the whole thing was square while it's set. Thank you. 
I left each door to dry for about 2 hours before taking them out of the clamps. And once out of the clamps, I had to just finalise the sanding. Finally I used my Craig jig just to drill the two holes to take the furniture hinges. And you may see these doors again at workshop 2 after Easter where I will be fitting them into some units. <laughs> 